Sue asked me a few days ago, um, well, what, what verses can I send to the body that you're standing on? And uh, I gave it that little thought, and I thought, well, it's not exactly like I'm, I have a, a fresh word from the Lord. It's like I've been standing on uh, His word for my healing for quite some time. I just decided that this was the time for full manifestation. So I expect more than my blood flow. Uh, I expect to be healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Amen. But uh, an interesting, uh, over the last, oh, let's say year, month or two, you know, different times over the last couple of years, um, you know, I lift my heart to the Lord. I say, Lord, what are you speaking to me? Well, I have this healing devotional, which many of you have, and Pam, I think, has given out to... Not yet. Oh, you haven't. Um, this healing devotional, and the first verse in it is Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, which says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Well, as a, as a student of the Word, uh, I have what's called the Septuagint, which is the Hebrew Old Testament scriptures translated into Greek. And in that version of Proverbs, the word for life is zoe, which is the Greek word for eternal life or the life that comes from God. And uh, other places in the scriptures, it talks about God's word being zoe life. Um, so, uh, so the next scripture, this, what, what I was going to say, I told my daughter that uh, the first few pages of the healing devotional are what I'm feeding on constantly and declaring constantly. So it goes on, the next thing it uh, records is Exodus 15, 26 uh, in Isaac Lesser's translation, which says, I, the Lord, am your physician. And uh, so, so that is an exciting verse. Then Jeremiah uh, fifteen sixteen says, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Uh, then uh, William Barclay translates Hebrews 4, 8, He's describing why Israel failed to move into the land which they had inherited, but the word which they heard did, did, was no good to them because it did not become woven into the very fiber of their being through faith. So, so I go over that and I say, Father, I thank you that your word is good to me and it has become woven into the very fiber of my being through faith. These are all things that you can pray for me and agree with me about. Not that, oh God, please do it, but oh God, it's thank you that it's done. You see? Um, then it goes on. Um, there's some other good things there for, for, for all of us personally, but uh, then in the um, next. Let's see. Uh, skip over if you have it there to page the next page. Oh, I thought you were passing it out. You want me to do that? Well, sure. That, that'd be good. Then people can kind of just track with me. Oh, that's great that it's up on the screen, though. Thank you, James. That's good. Um, okay. Page five, uh, James. Declaring your faith. Now this is what I do daily, and this is what I would like you to be doing for me as well, as, as well as for yourself, but I mean for you, for you as well. Uh, Job, the verse in Job 22, 50, uh, 25 through 28, Then the Almighty will be your gold and choice silver to you, uh, for then you will delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God, and you will pray to him, 
and he will hear you. You will also decree a thing, and it will be established for you, and light will shine on your way. Now remember when Bev was sharing, she said that you hear from heaven, and then you decree a thing. Well, Job's describing this. He said, you lift up your face to God, you hear what he's saying, and he hears what you're saying, and then you decree a thing, and light shines on your way. So what we're saying, in essence, is we're looking at our situations, mine and yours, and we're saying, light be. In other words, illumination, wisdom, direction, uh, counsel, all be in the light of God. So, so that's a very important part. Then he goes down a little further, and in, in, uh, he says, Mark 11, 23, For assuredly I say to you, now let me, let me read this to you the way I quote it. For assuredly I, Jesus, say to you, Joe McIntyre, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things you say will be done, you will have whatever you say. So now I have a list of things I say. I say, thank you, Lord, my kidneys are functioning properly. Thank you, Lord, my, pancre my pancreas works properly and that diabetes is beneath my feet in Jesus' name, and the accompanying symptoms of neuropathy and macular degeneration are also removed and cast into the sea. Just saying. And uh, then, uh, a little further in that, pas in that passage, there's some other, there's another verse. Um, uh, uh, Luke 17, 6. Now, the thing that I'd like you to notice, and the reason I did it this way, is that I want, you, I want the reader to think, this isn't just one obscure scripture taken out of context from the book of Job. Jesus confirms this in three different places in the Gospels. And what he says in uh, Luke 17, 6, as he says, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Passion Translation puts this quite clearly. If you have even the smallest measure of authentic faith, it would be powerful enough to say to this large tree, my faith will pull you up by the roots and throw you into the sea, and it will respond to your faith and obey you. That's pretty cool. But here's the thing. All of us have even the smallest measure of faith. This isn't for the great faith giant. Yeah. See, this is for born again believers. This is for baby saints. This is for just any believer because all of us have even the smallest measure of authentic faith. But let me just suggest something to you that I've observed over the years. Christians believe in prayer. That's nice. <laughs> But the thing that the Word informs us is that after you pray, decree. Remember, remember, Jesus, the, remember Lazarus? It says it, that Jesus arrives at the tomb and he says, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. I'm just praying for them. He's already done praying, but he's praying in front of them so they'll realize that what he's about to do is the fruit of his prayer. And so then he says, Oh, Father, I beg you, have mercy on Lazarus. Oh, the family's in pain. Oh, 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 oh. No. 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 He says, Lazarus, come forth. Yes. Now, what he did was he modeled what he taught in Mark 11, 23. He'd already prayed. He was prayed up. You see? Now, I'm not suggesting in any way pray, prayer is in, in value. What I'm suggesting is prayer moved by need and emotion is invalid if there's no faith in it. So I'm, I want to encourage you not to focus on how difficult a thing I face. 
I want you to focus on how faithful the God is that we're walking with and how he can heal anything. And he's already, okay, this is, this gets really fun here now. Um, so I've been going over this, these healing uh, prayers for quite some time. And they're, they're, you know, I would encourage you to do them too if you have any area of need. Um, but Sue asked me about, you know, well, what, what are you hearing from God? And so um, I said, well, um, the Proverbs 4.22 and, and, and that was, was the primary one. But I, but I also uh, said to her, I, Kenneth, uh, one of the guys I know on Facebook uh, said, hey, can I send you a, a, a memory stick of a bunch of Kenneth Hagin's teachings? And I said, well, well sure, because my stuff's in, in uh, storage. And I was trying, I was thinking, I wanted to hear some of his old teaching. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny, so I, I, I'm, I'm feeling of the Lord uh, like uh, I should go back to basics. And that I should, you know, restudy the basics of faith. And so um, I turn on Kenneth Hagin's show the last few nights. And he's got Terry Mize on there. Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. What did I say? Hagen. Oh, yeah. Kenneth uh, Hagen, uh, uh, Copeland show. And Terry Mize is on there. Terry Mize was a missionary to Mexico. Uh, wrote a fascinating book. Um, I can't think of the title. Do anybody remember it? More Ter Than Conquerors. More Than Conquerors. Yeah. Uh, but he, so, um, so he's in Mexico and he's, Feels really sent, he strong, feels like he's a strong missionary to Mexico. So he's driving in his car and he sees a guy hitchhiking and he thinks, I'll just share the Lord with this guy. So he pulls over, the guy gets in, he pulls out his gun, points his gun at him and says, you are gonna do what I tell you to do or I am gonna kill you. And Terry says, no, you're not gonna kill me. In the name of Jesus, you're not gonna do anything. He, so he pokes his gun in him again and he says, I'm going to kill you. He said, you're not, you can't kill me. In the name of Jesus, you can't kill me. And the guy's kind of, he says, okay, you're going to, you're going to take me to up to this mountain to, to visit uh, where I'm from. But no, I'm not. I have to get home to be with my family. I'm not going there in Jesus name. <laughs> And the guy's just doesn't know quite what to do. So he says, all right, pull over. So the guy says, now get out of the car. Follow me out into the, into the field here. Gets him out of the field. And says, Take off all your clothes. And so he, he actually does it. He takes off his clothes. And the guy picks them all up. And, and he and starts to walk away. And uh, he's, he asks for his car keys. And so he starts to walk away with it. everything he owns, his wallet, his car keys, everything. And he says, uh, in the name of Jesus, you're not taking my car. <laughs> so the guy just turns around and walks right back to him. And he says, okay, put on your clothes. <laughs> and so he puts on his clothes. And uh, he takes him back to the, to, to the car. And, and he, again, he, I, I mean, I got some of the details I might have not quite right here. But, but basically, the, the guy says, all right, now I, you get in the car and drive me up to where I'm from. And he said, no, I'm not. I've got to go home. In Jesus' name, I am going home. And he says, okay, okay. Uh, here's your wallet. Here's your keys. And he said, I've got to have my wallet. In Jesus' name, he gives him his wallet. <laughs> and so, so, so finally, uh, the, the guy is going to get in the car and take off. He says, you can't take my car in Jesus' name. And the, guy kept, the guy's just freaking out. And so finally, he gives him his keys back and, and uh, get, gets in the car. And he says, drive me up there. He says, well, I'm not going to do that. But I'll tell you what, I'll, if, you, if you need my, any, any of the money in my wallet or if you want my watch, or if you, you know, I'll give you all those things. Or if you, if you actually need some help. And the guy's just blown away. And um, so eventually... He just gets out and heads out, out into the field and, and Terry Mize 
drives back home. Wow. It's a, it's a great story. There's more details to, to actually hear it told. <clears throat> but it, what it stirred up into me and his whole message was the church needs to learn their authority. Yes. And, uh, and, and what it's also stirred in me is pressing in to throne life. Pressing in to the authority of the throne which we are all invited to partake in. And as much as I believe in prayer, I was a, the, the state head of the Strategic Warfare Network. I mean, I believe in prayer. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But too much prayer is orphans whining to Father. We are the sons and daughters of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, and it's time to take our place Amen. in Christ. If, that is, if that's in, in any way unfamiliar to you, my second book was called Who We Are in Christ. One of my later books was called Throne Life. And, and uh, Randy Clark read Throne Life, and he said, every new believer should read this. He, he thought it was a great message for new believers because we need to get, you know, we, we, we've had 100 and 300, 400 years of traditional prayer and we need to learn New Testament prayer. And we need to learn that New Testament prayer, once it discerns the mind and ear of the Father's, or hears the Father's voice, then we need to release that in the earth realm. We need to declare it and we need to decree it. So if we go a little further, oh, so what I started to say was um, I listened to this Kenneth Hagin series uh, uh, that was on the memory stick that I'd never heard before, and it was called uh, God's Healing Mercy. And basically it was the fourth chapter of F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth's book, Christ the Healer, taught by Kenneth Hagin. And basically he points out that when Jews in the first time of Christ, you know, when the Jews came to him and they wanted healing, they said, Lord, have mercy. But we have sort of watered mercy down to just be forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now we need healing, we need forgiving mercy but we need forgiving, we need healing mercy as well, and it's part of God's mercy. So when we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, then we can be obtaining healing mercy as well as grace to help in time of need. So um, I was already kind of focused on Hebrews 4.16, come boldly to the throne of grace, Basically, every morning, Lord, here I am, throne of grace to obtain your mercy. And I did some study on mercy. Some of you will remember me mentioning this, but mercy is a threefold core. Mercy is God's love. Mercy is God's steadfastness. And, and mercy is God's kindness. A supernatural, steadfast kindness in the sphere of covenant. In other words, you know, we don't approach God as beggars. We approach God as his covenant partners, his sons and daughters, and we don't come with guilt, shame, and condemnation. You know, if there's any of those issues, like Bev said, you deal with those before the Lord. But you see, your birth, see, in a sense, uh, the accuser has been entirely silenced, if you understand it. He has no right even to accuse you because you have an answer to any accusation, which is the finished work of Christ. And as it says in Hebrew, or, uh, Revelation 12, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. What's that mean? The finished work of Christ. What he's already done for you was enough to satisfy the claims of justice so that you are forever right with God. Amen. Now, if you let a stronghold up come again in your life where you're, where you're get, dealing with things like that, when you come into the light of God's presence, that'll come to light, and you can just say, no, I'm out of agreement with that. In the name of Jesus, it has no authority over me. It's dealt with. So, when I come to the Lord, I don't 
come with a catalog of things I need to repent of. I'm living day by day in fresh repentance. Now, I find that I've had to repent over things recently. Um, one of the things that's a common human frailty is to compare yourself with others. Well, I realized that that was ungodly. I'm, I'm the person I'm to be, to be comparing myself with is who God called me to be and Jesus himself. So I want to be more and more Christ-like, but I don't want to be like somebody else's ministry. I want to be who God called me to be. You see? So comparing yourself is unhealthy thinking. And, and that's one of the recent things that I've said. No, I'm done with that. And every time I'm tempted to compare myself with somebody, no, I'm done with that. So, so there is an ongoing work of the Spirit, but it's all based on what Christ has already done for you. It's not like you have to convince God to forgive you. But it, it, you do need to ask Him to. But if we confess our sins, He's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right. So, so I'm listening to this series and he's bringing out how God's healing mercy is available to God's people. And so actually, let me just tell you, Christ the Healer, the book by Bosworth, is read by Bosworth's son on YouTube for free and you can listen to it. The whole book is read and I've been listening to that lately and it's quite a classic on divine healing. Um, but the fourth chapter is the Lord's compassion. Well, so he's talking about the mercy of God, and he quotes Hebrews 4, 14. Now, I mentioned that I've been praying Hebrews 4, 16 regularly. But Hebrews 4, 14, Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Why, why therefore? Because we have a high priest who's right there beside the Father who's already been through it all and knows how to do it without sin and caving in one bit. And he's the one who opens the door for faithful and merciful covenant activity in our lives. Now, if the Father and the Son are in agreement that you and I deserve mercy and grace, who cares what the devil thinks? Right? I mean, here, here's the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, and I'm adding my third witness to the heavenly witness, of my faithful and merciful high priest who ever lives to intercede for me and is able to save me completely and uttermost, utterly to the uttermost. So uh, that was another scripture that uh, I, I mentioned to Sue that uh, I, I'm believing I have a faithful and merciful high priest and, and mercy is available to us at the throne of grace. Um, now, I also mentioned uh, to uh, the pre-service prayer group that I had thought I would put a little notice up on Facebook, because I have quite a few Facebook friends, and uh, mostly for discussion of theological stuff, but I thought, well, maybe, maybe five or six of them will agree with me in prayer that I am healed, that my blood flow is restored, you know. Uh, I, I, as much as I honor those who give themselves to prayer, there's a lot of prayer that's not based on the new covenant. And, and I, and I don't, I, you know, I really don't want people agreeing with me that I have a need. I want them agreeing with me that the God meets the need. See, I don't want the point of agreement to be, oh, you know you know what a good guy he is, and you know how he serves you, Lord, and oh, blah, 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 blah. Stop that nonsense. <laughs> Say, Father, you remember what you swore with an oath in your covenant to do? Yeah. 
I'm calling upon you now to do it for Joe McIntyre and to open up the veins in his legs so that they flow freely and so that his leg is totally restored. And while you're at it, Lord, restore fully his kidneys and manifest that miracle and restore and deliver him from every trace of diabetes in the name of Jesus. So if you go a little further in the healing booklet, uh, and I'll do that. Oh, it goes on at the end of, uh, uh, there at the end of page six. Uh, another verse is, For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Now, remember this was for the one who has even the smallest amount of authentic faith. So, that includes all of us. And if there's anything that rises up in your mind right now that says, well, yeah, but, shoot that. Cut it down. It has no right there. You see, there's nothing in you that can condemn you except listening to a lie. Okay? Now, uh, now if you know there's some area, as Beth said, if you know there's some area, deal with it. Because we have the potential as a body of releasing a whole new level of spiritual authority and dominion. And that's what God wants to do. And, uh, oh, I get so excited. I just got so much to share. I'm sorry. Um, and then, uh, oh, now, now listen to this. It says, uh, the mountains in our life will be removed. The problems we speak to would obey us and nothing would be impossible for us. Yeah. Talk about unlimited. Well, see, you know, the Bible says with God, all things are possible. It also says all things are possible to him who believes. Yes. Yeah. So, what what happened to a church of believers? Yes. Yeah. You know, not a church of hopers. Right. Not a church of people that were moved by a person's need. Well, it's, it's good to be moved by the need, but you got to be moved beyond their need. See? The, you know, the father doesn't go, oh my God goodness somehow they got sick he says son stir up the holy spirit in them to remind them of the, the work that you've already accomplished on their behalf and get them into agreement on that because if two or three of them agree on earth concerning that there he is in their midst Amen. Amen. well there are more than two or three of us here Amen. Amen. hallelujah okay so Moving right along, the uh, next page, uh, I have been stirred in my heart for a number of years about the faith of Abraham. It, it, the, the Old Covenant was built on the faith of Abraham. The Mosaic, you know, a lot of people today in the church are fascinated by uh, Israel and the law. And I want God to save every Jew. I'm in favor of those who are burdened for Israel and, and uh, want to see Israel saved. But I also want to see Germany saved. I want to yeah. see the U.S. saved. Yeah. I want to see the African nations saved, yeah. you see, because now the doors open for all nations yeah. because of Abraham. The fulfillment of Abraham's promise was all nations. See? He would be a father of many nations. And through him, all the nations shall be blessed. So there's a broader scope to things now. And we're joint heirs with Israel. We are the Israel of God. So all the promises of God are yes and amen to us who are in Christ. But as I said, I've been studying Abraham because Abraham's faith is changing the world. And Paul says in Romans 4 that we are the ones who are to walk in the footsteps of our father Abraham, whether Jew or Gentile. And he says, if the Jews follow in his footsteps, fine. 
If the Gentiles follow in his footsteps, fine. It's by grace through faith. See? It's a level playing field in the kingdom now. So he says in, uh, this is Hebrews 4.20 in the uh, King James Version. Uh, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And I have uh, the Living Water translation there. It says, his faith never wavered, even when he considered his own body and realized it was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old and Sarah was also completely barren, but never once did he waver in unbelief concerning God's promise. On the contrary, his faith grew stronger as he acknowledged God as true and being convinced that he was able to do what he had promised. Um, So I, I usually go over that in a few of these translations. And then I move on to Mark 11.24. And there's, there's a couple of translations of Mark 11.24 that uh, I find very striking. The first one is, is where it says BBE there, the Bible in basic English. For this reason I say to you, whatever you make a request for in prayer, have faith that it has been given to you and you will have it and then we have the jerusalem bible i tell you therefore everything you ask and pray for believe that you have it already and it will be yours the 20th century translation have faith that whatever you ask for in prayer is already granted you and you will find that it will be so when you pray, believe you receive. Yeah. See, well, I don't feel any better. That's not the question. I don't feel any better yet either. Well, I do actually. Um, I, I'm, I was supposed to be using a walker. And uh, you, uh, you may have noticed I wasn't using one today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they wanted to do a whole routine on how to live with a walker and a cane and everything like that. And I, and I you know, I'm not moved by that stuff. And I, I would do it for, you know, I, we got back our walker. For the, Mike and Sue had the walker that, for, their, uh, for Mike's mom. And uh, I got it back and I used it to get around a little bit. And then I just found out that I didn't need it. And, and I don't expect to need it. Uh, all right, so then in uh, next verse is Hebrews 11 and 1. And we have here the McIntyre uh, literal translation. Uh, now faith is that which is giving substance to the things we are hoping for, and it is, a proof, it is the proof of accomplished facts, a thing done, not yet revealed to the senses. Uh, now, I, I happened to be meditating on that one time, and I thought, let's see, the, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I thought, well, I wonder, I wonder what that word means, things. Well, I was surprised to find out that it's two different words in the Greek. And the second word, Thayer says, means accomplished fact, a thing done. So if I operated on Mark 11, 24 and believed that I receive, mm -hmm. then my faith that I received is giving substance in my experience to a thing done, a thing already accomplished. Yeah. Jesus already purchased my complete healing. Amen. So, you know, I won't keep you too many more hours here, but on page, oh, let's, let's look on page nine here for a second. I want to just have you see First uh, John 5, 14 and 15 um, in the Jerusalem Bible. We are quite confident 
uh, uh, some translations say bold, uh, that if we ask for anything, and it is according with his will, he will hear us. And knowing that whatever we may ask, he hears us, we know that we have already been granted what we've asked of him. So I want to I want to ask you to agree with me that I already have it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I want I want to ask you to decree it when you think of me. If you want to spend any time praying for me, I want you to say, Father, I thank you that the healing you began in Joe is being fully accomplished that all hindrances to his blood flow in his legs are removed and his blood flow is restored and a miracle has happened for his kidney and it's received resurrection life and it is beginning to function again and, and uh, he's no longer needing dialysis. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, praise God. Amen. All right, uh, one, one more section here. Uh, I want you to see the, the basic Old Covenant promises of healing. You see, healing is not just a New Covenant promise. Healing was promised to the Jews under the Old Covenant, and all they had to do was put faith in the sacrifices to keep in right standing with covenant, and they could claim every covenant promise of God. It says uh, in, in uh, Psalm uh, 105 that when Israel came out of Egypt, they came out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble one among them. Imagine that. Over a million people and not one feeble one Amen. among them. They had lived as slaves, but they came out with such glory that they, they, it's hilarious to read this if you think it through. But it says God gave uh, Israel favor with the Egyptians and the Egyptians gave them their gold and silver. That's right. That is insane. Now, you know, people today get offended if you talk about prosperity. It's a normal part of the covenant. You should have such favor that people want to give you stuff. Yeah. Holy favor. Now, you shouldn't try to manipulate people or, or try to get them to do things for you, but you should expect favor because you're one of God's covenant people. And the Bible doesn't say that was for the Jews. The Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. All right, so the first promise in Exodus is, I am the Lord, your healer. Now, I have been, I had a little burst of revelation recently about the names of God. God's names are just where the need of people caused him to reveal himself in a fresh way to them. So here they are at the bitter waters. Moses throws in the tree and reveals a new name. I am the Lord, your healer. And then in uh, 25, he says, I will take sickness from your midst and the number of your days I will fulfill. And then in Deuteronomy 7, he says, I will take away from you all sickness. I will take away from you all sickness. Now, I believe we're coming into a season when the church starts to believe these things. There's so much sickness in the body of Christ, it's supernatural. <laughs> uh, you know, there are prophets and then there are prophets yes. and one of the men that is really being profoundly used to the Lord in this hour travels with Bill Johnson and others Randy Clark uh, is um, James, Maloney. James Maloney well James uh, gave me a word uh, in at the end of 2011 
I was at a, a lunch, a pastor's lunch. Uh, I thought Bill was speaking, and uh, I've met Bill and know Bill, and I wanted to hear what he had to say. But I got there, and it was actually James, who I've never met, speaking. So he, he speaks his word, and then at the end he calls this couple up uh, to the front to pray for them and prophesy over them. And all of a sudden he stops and he says, You, I see the light of God's glory coming on you. This, uh, the Zoe life of God is strengthening you. Uh, I, the Lord is restoring your body like a young person's. Every joint in your body, the organs in your body that Satan has tried to shut down, Jesus is giving you abundant life. And he went on, I mean, he, he read, it's, you know, the phrase is, he read your mail. I received yeah. confirmation from that this morning. Well, amen. So, so, uh, he, he, uh, so I've got that pr prophetic word, and my thought about it is, if you got the written word of God, you're doing really good. But if he confirms it with this prophetic word, exactly things. See, the, the thing that really strikes me about prophets is some prophets read the, the what you're speaking in private before God, they prophesy to you. Because they're, they're hearing from the, you, you know, they're really hearing from God. Um, so years ago, Prophet Don Weber, who's one of the, another one of the prophets I really respected, he went home to be with the Lord a few years ago, but he came and spoke at our leadership gathering that we had at our home one night, and he just stopped and he says, Joe, the powers that test you are the ones you're destined to dispossess. Amen. Well, I like that. Yeah. So let's see, let's if see. I'm being Just tested in healing, <laughs> then what, what I'm going to do is, dis, is I'm going to not only be healed, but my destiny is going to be further fulfilled, and I'm going to enter into a whole new realm of healing and health as yeah, part yeah. of the fulfillment of yeah. my destiny, because yeah. where he's trying to rob me is where I'm destined to overcome. Yeah. 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 Praise God. Uh, and so another verse the Lord has really quickened to me is Romans 16, 20. The God of peace is crushing Satan under your feet. So I say that a lot. The God of peace is crushing Satan under my feet. So a funny thing happened. <laughs> What's that saying? A funny thing happened on the way to the war. Way to the war, I don't know. Uh, but... Um, when we began meeting here on a Sunday morning, I felt from the Lord uh, to, to begin a, a, a new series. I felt like the Lord said, go back and reteach the basics. And I said, okay. And um, uh, so I began, uh, so the second week I began a series, The Word of His Grace. Yes. And uh, I got home and there was a, a prophetic word from another prophet I know. Uh, named Shane, Shane Mason in Florida. And so, he, so it says this, I hear the Lord saying, what has been will be, and there is no new thing under the sun. The Lord says to you, son, you are my faithful servant, and I'm going to return you to a simple message that you once thrived on years ago, and this message will come full circle in the church. Yet this time, says the Lord, it will come in the... It, it, it will not come in the infant stage that you saw in the beginning. This time it will come with great maturity and free from men's manipulation. The Lord says, this will be the day that you have longed to see. It will be your hour of visitation as well. For the Lord says so, I am about to visit you with prophetic encounters and it will break forth your ministry once again. I hear the Lord saying, faith, the faith of God, you will declare and miracles will be the milk and honey of what I do in your life, says the Spirit of the Lord. Not bad, <laughs> but that that was the con I had just begun teaching the word of His grace, going back to the beginning, and here this word comes in confirmation that I should be doing that. Well, another prophet, <laughs> I, I like prophets. Uh, another prophet 
unsolicited, sent me this message uh, a couple of weeks, well, probably months ago now. But he said, uh, good evening, Joe. I've been meaning to send you a message for a number of days, but th with the recent passing of my father, it slipped my mind. For the past couple of weeks, the Lord uh, would lay you on my heart once in a while, and I would pray for you. About a week ago, I sensed the Lord saying something to you, but I never felt uh, the release to tell you until today. The Lord said, the Egyptians, your sicknesses, your kidneys, uh, and the sicknesses that you see today, you will see no more forever. Amen. I felt that there was going to be a meeting that you would be attending in the early part of next year, this year, now. And uh, I keep sensing February for some reason. And it would be during that meeting that the Lord would touch you in your kidneys and bring restoration. I had also sensed that in 2016, you would begin to see a greater measure of healing, signs, wonders, and miracles, and what you have seen in the past would pale in comparison to 2016. I also, you also saw you moving in a gift that I'm going to say is apostolic. What I saw you having the ability to see gifts in people and then to be able to connect that gift with a person who had a sickness and then the gift would bring forth deliverance. The answer to the problem. Amen. Blessings to you. <laughs> uh, you know, the reason I wanted to share this today is so that we could record it. And if you had any desire to or you wanted to share it with anybody, it'll be up on the page and they can hear it. Uh, I, I, I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned it in speaking this morning to you guys, but I, I put a notice up on Facebook, a short description of what I was facing and asking people to agree. And oh, I, there was like over 120 comments and probably the vast majority of them were, we agree and command blood to flow in, G in, in Joe's legs. We break the bondage and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, just perfect agreement in faith. Yes. And I just thought, man, I expected five or six, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it was just a, an amazing outcome. People, people I've known for years who never comment on my post, and they're commenting and, and saying, we agree, we agree. And, mm -hmm. the, you know, the hilarious thing is, the devil means this for evil. Yeah, yeah. And and yet, it's a rallying point for warfare. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, it's like I thought, you know, I'm not going to have my feet cut off. Amen. Amen. And I thought, well, why not just go the whole yes thing and get my kidney sealed and everything yeah. else manifestly yeah. healed. And that's what I'm trusting the Lord to do. I mean, not sometime, but now. I believe it's done by Jesus, but I believe it, it's got its appointed time. And, and February, the early part of February, in a meeting. Whoa! You know, we're there right now. Here we are. I know. And I thought, well, maybe it was on one of our Wednesday prayer meetings. meeting with the Lord. You know, or, or, or I thought, I'm going to go to a conference, I guess. Or something. Because Leif Hetland will be down at SRC uh, this month. And, and I thought, well, yeah, I'll go down. I'll ask Leif, Leif to pray for me. Well, I'll see, I still may do that. But here we are. Here we are. Yeah. And, oh, Shabbat Kandala. <laughs> Henry, I believe that you're supposed to lead a corporate command over my body and command it to come in line. There you go. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the fulfillment of everything that you prayed for, everything you stood for, that it is time for yes. completion. Yes. Yes. It is time for the finishing of the work. It's yes. time for the, the fulfillment of your dreams, your visions, and your destiny. We declare it now and it is determined in the courts of heaven, it is determined on this earth that you shall receive the reward today. In yes. Jesus' name yes. we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you.